Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video and welcome to, it's all, it's basically a, you know, as you guys all know, this weekend is AFL Gather Round and, uh, and, to, and, 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 and this year I wanted to do something different for Gather Round because I was, as I, as I said, um, in my, in my latest B, BD40 wrap up episode, I was a little bit, sl I was too, way too slack with it last year. So I thought myself, let's make up for it by, you know, by by doing this song. And I, so instead of do, doing the whole, you know, prime time, so instead of doing the whole prime time rap Saturday review that sort of shit, I decided to review all nine games. It's just in one in separate videos. Uh, so I'm going to so in this in this video I'm going to review the. Uh, yeah, the Adelaide Melbourne game. What my thoughts on that as well, and and then, and, then, and 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 as well with the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday games, I'm just going to view them as highlight them is each every game, not just you know collectively in one video. Just have one, one game be one video, one game another game be another video, another game will be another video. And I'm not just going to combine all three of them in one because I don't think you know uh, I don't think you guys want to want to watch me go on. About a game for three, for three hours straight, so so yeah, so uh, so yeah, so the first game, so in this video I'm going to be talking about the Thursday night game, yeah, which was on the other night between the Adelaide Crows and and and, and Melbourne, um, so yeah, um, so um, so so yeah, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> bless me, <coughs> bless me, uh, so. So yeah, so pre-game of course uh, there was only the one change really for from Melbourne compared to last week was the fact that Stephen May uh, came in. Of course he missed last week against Port Adelaide with a rib injury that he suffered in the game against Hawthorne, I think. Yeah, against Hawthorne. Uh, yeah, and then uh, but for Adelaide, of course, their horrible start to the season. They had five changes to the to the, of course adding in of course the likes of Butts Parnell. Uh, Nan Kerbis, Cook, and Barry, while, uh, while of course you know Locker Murphy and Wayne Miller were out due to injuries, and then the likes of uh, Borlase, uh, Borlase, Shoal, and Pedler were out, uh, were axed, for uh, were omitted from the side, uh, and of course the, the both of the subs at the start were named obviously Sam Berry for the Adelaide Crows and uh, and, and Taj and, and Taj Woden. Uh, the son, uh, the son of Brownlow medalist Shane Woden, uh, was uh, was named as the sub there, and uh, it was a pretty slow start for both teams. I must, I must, I must admit. Um, of course, you know Harrison Petty ended up uh, ended up, you know, kicking the first goal, kicking the first goal of the game, uh, courtesy of a uh, courtesy of a, of a free kick for holding the man against you know Jordan Butts. Uh, but then, uh, and it, and it was. A pretty pretty slow, obviously, uh, and then obviously you know um, Adelaide kicked, kicked a couple of behinds to start their game, and then and then of course Isaac Rankin, of course from a tight angle, obviously we all know how good Isaac Rankin is, we we all know we all know that uh, kicking 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 his and the Crows' first goal of the match, uh, which which put them in front by two, um, and then and, and then. Uh, it, it, in front by two, and at the halfway point, it was that it was how it was basically. You know, it was just it was just slow. It was just basically it was more or less. You know, it, it, each team tried to suss each other around a little ways, a little like, uh, to be honest. And then, um, and then, uh, and then, of course, uh, Cos and then of course, Cosy Pickett, Mark, Mark uh, uh, halfway through the first quarter, marked, marked, uh, marked a uh, marked in the uh, it, it marked deep in the pocket, and Bernard. Had, uh, eventually, when it went on, Bernard had won through uh, to kick his first for the for, kick his first for the night uh, to put Melbourne back in front, um, and and then uh, and then basically um, and then we and then we and then at the end of, at the very end of the quarter we were about we were about a couple of seconds left. Um, Darcy Fogarty marked marked and um, Dar yeah Darcy Fogarty marked. Um, it, it, deep in the pocket, he, he he snapped it. He snapped. I think he snapped it through. Um, with, with about with about with several seconds to spare in the in the quarter, and, and of course uh, gave the Crows the lead at quarter time. 
um, late at quarter time, of course, two five, two five to two five to two straight. Um, of course, uh, of course, uh, the two. Of course, the two goal kickers for Adelaide, of course, for Rankin and Fogarty. The two goal kickers, not surprisingly, were from the two P, the two P's in uh, in, Pe in Petty in Petty and 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 uh, and Cosie Pickett. Um, the lean disposal getters, uh, earthal getters for Adelaide in that quarter, um, in the first quarter. Uh, at quarter time was Laird, Laird with not with, with nine touches and of course and then and then, Daw and then Dawson and Sal and uh, and Saligo had at, had eight touches in that first quarter um, for Me for Melbourne J uh, Judd McVie had uh, had eleven touches in that first quarter uh, in the first quarter with, with with Stephen May and Christian Petrarca having seven touches each so pretty a pretty good going there and you could see and you could tell from from the early parts of the game that that Stephen May was in a bit of pain uh there was the first contest that it looked like he was arriving in pain still with that rib injury uh but uh, but but he went all right during during the game to be honest there uh, there on that front as well uh, of course uh, obviously also speaking of Stephen May obviously they got um they got, they got, of course, of course, got not only the seven touches, but also he got, he got five marks. Three of it, and three of those, three of those marks were intercept, with intercept, intercept mark, were intercepts in that, in that, in that first quarter. Uh, but, uh, but the last five minutes of that first quarter, it, it all is an expert to call it red time footy in that last five minutes. It was basically all the crows. I mean, there were, there were, there were in the first quarter, there were plus eight in contested possession. There were, there were. Plus sixteen uncontested. Um, there were plus eight in clearances. That that so they got all the ball. It, it got all the ball in terms of clearances, which is strange considering they're playing against Melbourne, uh, which they've got the likes of you know Oliver, Petrarca, Viney, and all that sort of, all those guys there. And they were also plus twelve in, in inside fifties uh, in the last five minutes of that first quarter. So so really they got the got the got the game back on their terms late in that first quarter. Uh, heading into quarter time, um, then the second term, um, and then the second term after after it's after five after after starting the first quarter with five straight behinds um, in in that quarter, including of course you know the, of course some of them were you know easy lot like, like like Jack Billings you know missing one missing one for uh, missing one in the pocket from point basically from point blank range, uh, some of those got those were, were going through. Uh, Kat, and then of course Chandler, you know, hitting the post and that sort of stuff, and a rush behind during that as well. Uh, it was, it was, it was with about, I think it was about maybe about nine or ten minutes into the quarter that finally, um, uh, that finally Melbourne broke the shackles with none other than Christian Petrarca kicking the, it, kick, snapping one through to end those runs of behinds to put it to put them in front by by a kit by a goal. Um, the, I mean, I mean, Adelaide had their chances in, in in the second quarter as well. I mean, Rochelle missed missed the snap missed the snapshot, uh, missed the snapshot, uh, and, and then and then and then, and then Matt Crouch, were, were four minutes later, kicked another behind. But uh, and during in the middle of that, Rory Laird, who's been criticised for you know having a lot of possessions but not doing much with it. Let's put it that way. I mean, I mean, I've heard somewhere that that he. That during the game he got like he gets like he, he, he I think one of the games I mean mentioned he was criticised having like having like thirty odd thirty odd touches like thirty four thirty five touches and only had meters and only had like probably like hundred odd meters gained which is outrageous to so to speak uh, but yeah but he he had an uncontested mark in the pocket uh, and, and kicked it through uh, kicked it through the middle kicked it through in the middle uh, to give the crows the lead back. Uh, and then, uh, and of course, um, and, and then, and then of course, um, and then of course, Kay Chandler, uh, her, uh, Kay, Ch Kay Chandler marked on a really tight angle, uh, with about four and a half minutes left to go in the quarter, but he kicked truly from, from, on a tight angle from 49 metres, kicked it, kicked, kicked it straight through the middle and, uh, and gave the Demons back the lead, um, and then, uh, and then, pretty much, and then, and then after you know, Chris Burgess kicks it behind, kicks it behind, 
which was very very close to goal to bring Crow's margin back to four. From from afterwards, it was pretty much all Melbourne from there from there on. I mean, I mean, Cosy kicked kicked the goal, kicked kicked his second, it kicked his second about a minute or so later, and then uh, and then afterwards, you know, Billings misses again from the pocket to bring the margin back out to eleven, uh, and and then and then with forty five seconds, and then with seconds left, of course, Jake and Van Royen uh, marked directly in front from twenty five from twenty five. Uh, which was turned into a certain goal because Mark Keane was penalised and then was given was given fifty metres. Of course, Mark Keane was uh, was uh, was doing a bit of umpire descent. Was doing was sorry, was doing a bit of this to the umpire, which fair enough as well. Which turned into a certain goal for Van Royen to get his first goal of the game from the goal square from that fifty metre penalty, which which meant that got them up by what got them. Got them up by 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 seventeen points, uh, which which where it stayed for for the rest of the quarter and the main break it was um, Melbourne in front Melbourne in front of course by seventeen um, six seven two three eight uh, which which was all because all because of um all because of their I, I I mean I mean if they had kicked straight in that second quarter that it, it, Adelaide was lucky this this margin wouldn't have blown out to like six or seven goals let's put it. Put it that way. I mean, Melbourne kicked five straight behinds to start that second term, and kicked and kicked and kicked, and went on to kick only four goals seven for the for the entirety of that second quarter. Uh, compared and then and, and for them to only get one one three in that third ter- in that second term was uh, pretty poor really for Adelaide. Uh, in terms of their goals, I mean, I mean Rankin, I mean Laird was added to the goals there alongside of, of Rankin and Fogarty's goals in the first term. And then, uh, and then, and then Melbourne's goals up until halftime. Of course, it was picking was the only multiple goal kicker in the game with, with a couple, with Petrarca, Petty, Van Royen, and Chandler getting on the act as well. Um, the leading disposal getters at halftime for uh, for Adelaide, of course, was uh, Jake Saligo uh, getting sixteen touches in that in that first half. Laird with fourteen and Chase Jones with twelve. Um, with uh, with Melbourne. Uh, Christian Petrarca, ha, 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 of course, had, of course, usually him. I mean, sixteen touch, sixteen touches in that in that first half. Uh, J- John McV with with fifteen. He, he calmed down a little bit after eleven touches in the in the first turn. He only had four in the second, but uh, but yeah, but fifteen in the first half still a good effort from him. And then also Jack uh, Jack Riney with twelve. With twelve touches, I mean, I mean, I mean, the stats here for but speak about the tracker. I mean, it's just outrageous. I mean, you got sixteen, he had sixteen, he had sixteen touches in the first half. He had sixteen touches, four clearances, three hundred twenty nine meters game, six scoring moments, and of course a goal in, of course a crucial goal to break the shackles in that second term. Um, while Jordan Dawson, um, of course Jordan Dawson, he hadn't had his usual influence. I mean, he's had he had eleven touches in the first half and a couple and five tackles throughout that game, which I think was at half time was the most in the, of anybody in the game in this game. Uh, but it, it wasn't you know, exerting, exerting himself, but there. But Isaac Rankin, you know, he he was you know he was going along all right. And he had his he had his moments in that first half. Of course, he had ten touches, they had four score involvements, and of course kicked the goal. In the first term, but but yeah, as I said, he had his moments in that first half, and uh, and it was it was really hoping um, that it would get better for them in that sec in that second in that after you know after half after half time, uh, and then in the early stage that and then in the early stages of the third term, it it, it pretty much turned into turned into the Bailey Fritz show. Turn, let's put it that way. Uh, I mean. I mean, first off, he he, he marked from thirty meters out of a slight, a slight angle and put it through for his first goal tonight, which I still couldn't believe that he, up until then, he can't get the goal yet in that game. And then, uh, and then, um, and and then, uh, B, and then BBB Big Ben Brown uh, himself himself uh, he he also took a mark, you know, or, or, uh, took a mark on the lead, you know. Uh, it, it, he's, of course, of course, we all know how good we all know how good he is. In, 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 good he's been on the lead for, in, in, throughout the journey, uh, in all sorts of market situations. Let's put it that way. But uh, which didn't lead to a goal, uh, and then and then another behind from from, from Melbourne, and then um, 
and, and it seemed like, you know, it was starting to slip away for, from the Crows a little bit. And then, and then of course, you know, Tex, you know, Tex Walker, first time really got it, got it really... Got got himself, you know, in position. You know, took uh, took a very nice contested mark, thirty meters out, thirty meters out, which which he kicked, tr which he kicked truly, as well. And, and then uh, and then just as you know, and then uh, and then obviously, uh, and then after you know, Petty missed uh, missed his shot from 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 a holding free kick against Keane. Uh, he uh, Fritch made it a second at him for the quarter. Uh, which b brought the margin back out to twenty, uh, margin out to twenty six points, and then uh, and then and then of course, um, and then of course, uh, and then he got a fifty meter penalty um, f uh, uh, because of of course Patrick Parnell, you know, whacking the ball, well not wh whacking the ball, but palming the ball out of his hands after he took the mark, and we all know that's a big no no. You get yeah, yeah come with me, fifty meters, um, and then. Um, at fifty meters, at fifty meters, and a halfway stage, that was the margin, twenty six points. At, at, at halfway through the halfway through the quarter, and then shortly afterwards, um, Fr yeah, Fritch made it a third in the quarter, which brought the margin to thirty two points. I mean, it, it it was just you know, not good. It was just uh, you know, uh, it was it the, the game was really starting to get it get out, it, get slip out of the Crows' hands really fast here. Um, and, um, and, and then, stra and then, and then straight afterwards, they've finally kicked it behind straight out of the center, uh, straight out of the center, straight out of the center, uh, to extend that margin to 33. And then afterwards, um, then, and then afterwards, obviously, um, uh, Adelaide activated their sub in, uh, it, 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 their sub in, in Sam Berry that we, came on for Chris Burgess. Uh, and then, uh, and then, and then afterwards, you know, and then Ben Keys. Uh, a few minutes later, um, you know, Tex Walker took the mark and he handballed it off to to, to Ben Keys for a Joe de Goose goal. Uh, it's been pretty much the norm of the last few weeks these Joe de Goose goals. Let's put it that way. Uh, but yeah, and then, um, and, and then, and then, and then with six minutes left, obviously Blake Howes got a holding free kick. It, it, only free kick, which was against uh, against against Liam Kerbis, uh, which it, it, he intended, it, which he missed initially, but he actually, but it actually was a, it was actually was a good kick for Jacob Van Royen to take take one of his usual high marks, which you know which he snapped it through from ten meters out to make the margin back out to thirty three. Uh, and then Fog and then Fogarty marked and gold again to make the margin to get back again to twenty seven points. So it was a bit of back and forth action there uh, during that third term. Uh, and then and then Gorney, you know, and then Gorney uh, marked uh, Big Max, you know, mar marked over thirty meters out, but unfortunately missed it to the near, and missed that to the near side. Uh, and that was pretty much it, really. It, it, it pretty much really, really for that quarter. Uh, I mean, if really for that quarter, I mean, um, I think I haven't written it down on my on my thing over here, uh, but I think I'm trying to see how many got I'm trying to see here uh, five goals. So it was it was five goal. It was five goals. One, two. How many? Five goals. One, two, four, two. Full goal six, so it was it, it was four it was it was four it was four seven in the second term for uh, from Melbourne, and then it was four six for uh, for Melbourne. So so I, it just leaves me to wonder if they if they if if they kicked straight, then this would margin would have blown out to probably about forty odd points. Well, let's put it that way, but uh, but yeah, but, uh, but yeah. So basically. Um, Melbourne went into, went into the last change uh, at, with a 28-point lead, obviously, 10-13 to 6-9. Uh, for Adelaide, um, uh, for Adelaide, of course, uh, of course, uh, of course, Fogarty was there at the at the time for, at, at three quarter time was there only multiple goal kicker with two, with, with Rankin, Lead, and Keys all having one. Uh, we in terms of the goals for Melbourne, uh, Fritch with uh, with three goals, all of them in that third term. 
Uh, it, it was really, the, really the game breaker. It was really the game breaker for them in that game. With uh, in the third quarter, with with, 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 his, uh, with his uh with his treble, um, Pickett with two, Van Royen also with two, and then Petty Chandler and Petrarca all having one apiece. Um, it, 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 it turns the lead. I suppose we'll get us at three quarter time. Uh, for Adelaide, I mean, he had Jake Saligo and. and Saligo and and Brody Smith for twenty one touches each, and then of course you had um, Laird and and Matt Crouch with twenty touches each as well. Uh, for Melbourne, the lean, lean disposal getters, of course, for Traka with twenty two touches, uh, McVee with seventeen, and, and Viney with sixteen. Uh, so yeah, so the the big thing, so the big player, obviously, of course, I said Bailey Fritch, of course. Uh, with with seven tu- with, with, of course he had he had only he has only the seven touches, and, but but all of them were were involved in had at, were all of them had had him being involved in a score involvement, um so, and and then obviously it ended of course in three goals, all of them were in that third term, uh, and then the one thing also to highlight, as well in that in the second and third quarters was the points from turnover and. and um, yeah, I, I mean Melbourne it got it had forty one points from their turnover from turn, from Adelaide turnovers, while while the uh, while the other way around Adelaide only had six points from Melbourne's turnovers, which is you know which is which is probably the reason why one of the reasons why you know Adelaide are, are struggling at this point in time, if you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, I mean you have you have to you know. And I, and I think, and I, and I think, I'm trying to think who had the who had the more turn had more turnovers at three quarter time. I think it might have been Melbourne just. I think, but Adelaide couldn't convert them. So, so yeah, so it was pretty uh, so, so it was there. Um, there, there, then, uh, and then after, uh, and then. Then the last quarter, you know, pretty interesting stuff. You know, Melbourne, you know, just still, you know, there's, we don't, we still, we still don't know how they'll go. And then, uh, and then, will they, you know, narrow it down a bit, you know, try and seal the win, or will Adelaide come back? Uh, and for much of the last quarter, it was basically all Adelaide, really, at the front. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, there was like one, two, three. There was like four straight behinds for, combined from both teams in the early stage of the last quarter. Uh, there, I mean, I mean Adelaide. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean Adelaide, uh, and, and, then, and then of course the crowd attendance. Of course, forty eight thousand and twenty people were there. It was, it was fully packed. It was fully packed there, and and, and, and apparently all the, all nine games to gather around are going to be sold out, which is fantastic. For, for the for the uh, for the people of South Australia, uh, and then of course Jordan Mar- uh, Jordan Dawson, the captain, took the mark and uh, and went through to kick his first goal of the night to reduce the margin of twenty two points, just to make it a little bit in doubt there. Uh, during that time, obviously uh, the D's uh, made their sub, uh, subbing off Ben Brown for uh, for Taj for Taj Boy Woden uh, to get get him a run around, uh, and then and then of course and then and then of course. And then of course, we, and then of course, with under eight minutes left, Josh Rochelle kicked, uh, kicked, uh, kicked, uh, kicked the goal from a free kick, which is one from a free kick, uh, which made it four of the la- four of the, the, the last five goals at that point were were scored by Adelaide, and just like that, they were back within fifteen points. We all thought, oh, the comeback might be on here. It might be on here. The comeback might be on, uh, but. Um, and, and and the margin was wheeled down from fourteen. Then it was back up to fifteen, and then and then, and then uh, and it, that was probably the last goal. Yeah, that was probably was the last goal of the game on that front from from Rochelle of eight minutes eight minutes left, I think. And then uh, and, and then it was just you know behind up behind after behind. You know, not much goals were scored in that game, but but eventually Melbourne hung on and basically won the game by by fifteen points. Uh, at the end of the game, the, the day to get their fourth straight win and also their second win at the Adelaide Oval in two weeks. Obviously, beating the Power last week and now beating the Crows this week. 
uh, which is, yeah, it, right, it, of course, winning by 15 points over a very gutsy Adelaide side, 10-18-78 uh, to 8-15-63. So both sides had their chances, but they couldn't convert them in a lot of ways, especially for Adelaide in that last quarter where the game was on the line. Um, the goal scorers for um, uh, goal scorers for Adelaide, uh, Fogarty, the only multiple goal scorer with two at the end of the game. Uh, Rankin uh, and then Rankin, Laird, Walker, Keys, Dawson, and Rochelle all had one goal each. Um, for uh, for Melbourne, uh, of course Bailey Fritz with three goals. Like I said, all of them in that third term. Um, then he caught, got Kasai Pickett with two. Who there's a possibility he might end up in MRO trouble after it, after an incident during during the game, which which I think uh, actually no, it was confirmed. It was confirmed late last night uh, or before the uh, Port Adelaide Essendon game or during the Port Adelaide Essendon game that he's been suspended for one match for that for that necessarily necessary yeah, for that incident. Um, I'm trying to remember who the Adelaide player was. I'm trying to remember here. I might. It might say here. It might say here. Uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, when he made, when he was, when he bumped Jake Saligo, uh, when he copped. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Bit of a fever. Yeah. So um. So yeah, but um. But yeah, so so he ended up with two, of course, being Ryan also with two with Petty Petrarca and Chandler all kicking. A goal apiece. Uh, the best on um, the best for Adelaide, of course, not surprisingly, Jake Saligo uh, was great. Was great for, for Adelaide in this game. Uh, and then, of course, you had Jordan Dawson, Rory Laird, uh, Mark uh, Mark Keane had his moments up in uh, high and lows, but anyways, and Isaac Rankin as well. Um, the best uh, the, the best players for for Melbourne, not surprisingly, one of them was Christian Petrarca. We'll get to him in a sec. Um, we, of course. Um, of course, Stephen May gone not too badly from that uh, recovering from that rib injury. Uh, Fr uh, Bailey Fr and then of course Bailey Fritch got the skipper Ma Maxi Gorn, uh, John McVie who uh, who had who had, I think had a fantastic game, and and, and Jack Viney. Uh, the lean disposal getters on the ground at, at the end of the game for Adelaide. Of course, Matt Crouch with thirty uh, with thirty touches. Uh, Saligo and Smith with twenty seven touches each. And Laird and Matthew Hinge had 24 touches each uh, there. Uh, for Melbourne, not surprisingly, Petrarca at the top with 29. Um, Sparrow, Sparrow, Sparrow and, and Judd McVie both had 20 touches each. And then Viney and May with 19 touches each as well. I mean, could there be an argument that the three Brownlow votes in this game, this particular game, could go to Christian Petrarca? I mean, according to these statistics, I mean, 19, 29, 29 disposals, 19 contested possessions, 8 clearances, 7 inside 50s, 10 score moments, and a goal. If he doesn't get the free Brownlow votes in this game, it's something that is very wrong here. Yeah, but, uh, but, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but in terms of other, others, I mean, Matt, uh, Matt, uh, skip, skip Matt Scorn, he, he had a good, he had a good night. Uh, uh, he, 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 he didn't really set the world on a fire in the ruck, but, um, but he, but he wasn't that bad either. He had, he had a, de he had a, a bit of a Matt, a usual Matt Scorn night, uh, 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 to be honest. You know, I mean, 15, I mean, 15 touches, you know, four, uh, four, uh, four contested marks, which was the most in the game, to be honest, I think. Um, 10 hitouts to advantage, 39 total, 39 total hitouts, uh, five clearances, and, and and six scoring moments. So a pretty decent night. I, I think he he might get the one or two votes in, in this game, probably uh, in this game, yeah, possibly in in this game. Uh, the one thing that, that stood out to me here was uh, was Tom was Tom Sparrow. Not, not only get it, it, this game, obviously with twenty touches, with twenty touches, five clearances, five inside fifties, and six scoring involvements, but also um, the amount of amount of midfield time he's playing. I mean, I mean, from in the first couple of games, in the first uh, was it zero, one, two, three? In in the first four game, in in, in their first three or four games, uh, they had uh, uh, he was he was spending forty six percent time in the midfield. And and fifty cent, and fifty eight percent time up forward, 
Um, but in this game, but in this game on Thursday night, basically all but all but two percent, he was playing in the midfield. He was playing ninety eight, but he he spent most of his time in the midfield. Uh, so yeah, so it's good to see for for Melbourne's depth. You know, they're not just going to rely on the likes of Viney, Petrarca, and Oliver going in there. Of course, you got you got you got Sparrow could go in there. Um, and, and a whole lot of others as well. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, what, what, yeah, as I said, a whole lot of others in there that could go in the midfield as well, just to give you, just to give you know Petrarca and, and track and that a bit of a, a bit a bit of a break and a chop out and that sort of stuff. So, so yeah. And the last thing I want to talk about also is the fact of Mel is the fact of Sydney's uh, not Sydney. I'm speaking. I'm. You're going too far forward, Brian. You're going too far forward. Melbourne's uh, interstate record. It's one of it, which is one of the be- it, which is the best in the competition over the last few years. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, forty-two games. They've won. They've won twenty-nine of forty uh, of forty-two games. Um, outside of, at, at interstate, which is which is of course number one in the competition over the last couple of years. Which it which is great. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, of course that, that of course, it, of course, in this competition, you know, it, 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 can't, it can't just win your, your own at win at home, you know, to 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 have a finals, you know, book a finals berth or win a premiership. You need to win everywhere, and and Melbourne have certainly proven that over the last few year, over the last couple of years. Uh, definitely with that record, so 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 they definitely team to fear away from home. Uh, and, and, I, and I think, I think the next game, I think, I think the next game, if I if I can check here, I think the next game, I think it's yeah, it's on Thursday night against Brisbane against Brisbane, uh, and, and then the next interstate game, um, next game interstate, I uh, so the next game interstate would be, I think around. Maybe round eight, I think. No, round not. Round no, no, not round nine. If I just go to go to you, go to. I'm I'm having a few dramas here. A few dramas here. Hey, here we go. So I believe. Then next. Oh, here we go. Uh, putting in next would be round ten. Yeah, in round ten, I'm um, surprisingly uh, against the Eagles, which is would be another interstate win. Let's put it that way on that front. But uh, but yeah, so so yeah, so pretty good night for for Melbourne fans. Not so for for Adelaide fans as they start to a zero four start to the season. Uh, so yeah, so that is pretty much it for this uh, for this review. Um, I might need to end this video here because I think the West Coast at uh, Sydney game has just started. So uh, so yeah, so uh, so yeah, so like this, so like this video, uh, share this to anybody who who is a uh, who is uh, who is a Melbourne fan or an Adelaide fan or a general uh, AFL fan uh, fan. Comment down below. Are you excited for Gavin Round as I am? Are you excited? Even though we'll get to what happened on fr on Friday night, <laughs> even though yeah, even though what happened on Friday night, which I'll get to that in a later video. Let's put it that way. But um, but yeah, so yeah, and one last thing somewhere down there, somewhere, click on the big red button which is labeled which is labeled subscribe. Uh, but until next time, guys, I'll see, see you all later. Get excited for flipping gather around, ladies and gentlemen.